Marielena, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I wanted to start off this with you letting us know more about yourself and how and how you got here in your career in life. I think to define me, the most important thing is to tell you who I am. I am Gabby and Julia's mom. I am the daughter of Mexican immigrants. I was born in Los Angeles and I live in Miami. And what I do is I am a journalist. I am an independent journalist. I am a contributor with CBS News at the moment. But for most of my career, I worked in Spanish language media, Univision Network, where I was a network news co-anchor and also co-host of Aquí y Ahora uh, National News Magazine. And I think I've been very fortunate throughout my career to be a witness to history, traveling around the world and covering very important you know, things that happen around the world that really had an impact in, in society. I've covered wars, I've covered elections in the US and Latin America, I've covered natural disasters, and most importantly, I've covered the growth of the Latino community and the immigration challenges that they have faced for decades. There's been, I'm sure, so many examples of, of the most beautiful moments in, in history and the most catastrophic and challenging. And among those, is there one example of an event that has helped shape you? It's a little bit difficult to pinpoint one because as you can imagine, during 37 mm -hmm. years of career and, and, and covering the world basically, there were so many important things. But there have been some, if I had to pick one or two, I could say that defined my career and my path was in the beginning of my career at Channel 34 in Los Angeles. And Latinos had no political representation. And there was an election where Latinos had an opportunity to elect one of their own to the city council. And I went out to do my interviews and I came back and told my boss, I can't do this story. She says, why can't you do this story? I said, because no one is voting. People either were undocumented or they hadn't registered. I didn't know that there was an election. And he told me, you know, you have the story right there in front of you. Latinos are not mm -hmm. voting and not having representation because they feel disenfranchised from mainstream America. And that's when I realized that part of my responsibility as a journalist would be to empower the Latino community to inform them not only of their rights, but also of their responsibilities. And like I mentioned before, natural disasters are also stories that have marked me. Um, it's very frustrating to see so much suffering uh, and not being able to do anything except tell their story. And with that first story, especially, I think, you know, as both a Latina and a woman, you know, you're in, in two, two underrepresented groups in, in media and mass culture. And yeah. I, you know, I wonder what your advice would be for members of underrepresented communities. Like you said earlier, you know, those who may not be represented in, in these voting elections or in other ways, what advice would you give them to help them make their voices heard? I have learned something from my youngest daughter. She told me once, mom, stop saying that you're the voice of the voiceless. She said, that's mm. ridiculous. There's no such person uh, that doesn't have a voice. Everyone has a voice, but they don't have a platform for their right. voice. And it really made so much sense to me. It was so wise and so true. So the first thing that I, that I would say is that find a platform, find a forum, no matter how small or how big, and be fearless. You know, fear is one of those things that, that stop people, that blocks people from speaking out to the point of paralyzing them. And, you know, there's enough obstacles out there that people face uh, to make um, our own insecurities uh, another obstacle. There's that little voice that's in our head that tells us, You can't, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're going to fail. So, you know, we as women, or really all of, of, like you said, unrepresented communities, have to recognize the power that we have. And we have to learn how to exert that power. Because there's a lot of noise out there drowning or trying to drown our voices. But we have to just speak louder and, and be consistent and, and never give up. It's great advice. And I, you know, right now, I mean, there's just such a climate of distrust of the media as you know right. and so much noise as you're saying and how to break through it and all of the harmful rhetoric and the propaganda that's happening and how do we know and i think it's it's really fascinating to to know from someone in your position how do you think this current climate of distrust and and fake news and all this where do you see this going I'm more worried about society than I am about the media. Let me tell you why. This is a very mm. serious problem and it's very dangerous for our democracy because the media is one of the pillars of our democracy. You know, we are the eyes and ears of society. We're there to tell the truth, to denounce injustice and corruption. And we're really the only filter between those in power and the ones that they want to reach. Um, That's right. You know, we, we see in authoritarian governments, one of the first things that they do is try to silence the media from the extreme of killing them putting them in jail, closing down or shutting down uh, the media outlet 
um, or trying to silence them and discredit them, calling them, you know, the enemy of the people. So, you know, we have power. Otherwise, why would they want to silence us? That's very important. But, but media does have to, up to a certain point, take an inner look at how we are handling this rhetoric, which we had not faced uh, at this level in the past. The media has always been criticized. You know, where do we draw the line in our reporting? Do we fact check everything that is said? Or, or, or do we trust and just report what is said? You know, but if we don't call out the lies and the misinformation, then we're not really doing our job. And I've always thought that uh, society that is misinformed, underinformed, uh, it's a society that's vulnerable to the abuse of those in power. I think that your role and your responsibility or your opportunity is now goes so far beyond just the two dimensional you in front of a, of, of a TV, right? You have all these other opportunities to share this wisdom and insight and the truth, right? And your observations and what you've seen. And, and I wonder how you brought that world of experience into your judging process for Elevate right. and you know what, what you felt about the experience and how you think all of what you brought to the table helped you in deliberating over these, um, these applications that you saw. You know, besides being a journalist, I've always been very active in my community in different organizations, whether it's journalist organizations or educational organizations. But I would say that as a journalist, it, it's been almost four decades where I have seen a lot, you know? Yes. Uh, I haven't only been an observer, but I've been an active participant. And, and what I mean by that is that I have witnessed the growth of the Latino community. I have witnessed the milestones that our community has reached because we always talk about problems. So we don't realize that we also have reached a lot of, of milestones, but also the many challenges that we have faced. And, and that really requires a deep dive into the causes of those challenges and, and looking for solutions. So one thing I realized is that, you know, we can't depend on governments to fix things. Um, too many people are invisible for governments, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, so it really takes philanthropy and concerned citizens, as nonprofit organizations are, to, to step up and have a real commitment. Um, a lot of them are very selfless. It takes a very special kind of person to, to give of themselves selflessly, you know, to help solve some of the most, you know, serious challenges our society faces. And they deserve, I think, not just our recognition, but also, you know, the type of support that the Elevate Crisis is offering them having witnessed you know your insights about these applications i couldn't agree with you more you know that there's so much to the experiences that you've had that you can bring into this that you're not just a journalist right you're this mother you're a latina you're an activist you've lived this long rich beautiful life around the world right. and i think so many of us were pigeonholed you know into this this is what you are you're an expert in this box right but yes there's right. so much more that you have to offer and so much more that you have insight on. And so, I, you know, again, yeah. thank you so much for, for being one of our judges. But I think it's an important lesson for everyone but when if, you're putting together a group like this. If I could just yeah. add something to that is, you know, the media were always accused of being activists. And actually, it's really an advocate, not so much an activist. It's an advocate That's where you advocate, right, yeah. yeah, where you advocate really for your community, where you advocate for those that are suffering, those that are, like I said before, invisible. Um, and, and some people are just living in their own bubble, in their own world, and don't realize just how many people out there are in need and how their life could be so much better if they just got a little bit of help, at least, uh, in going, for, going forward. And the exposure, right? I think that w what better, more powerful way of creating greater empathy in the world than just exposing people to these issues. I think in their, at their core, most human beings care about other human beings but if they've never seen or witnessed the issues or the suffering or the obstacles right. it's easy for them to ignore you know so like you said it takes a real special person to devote their lives to to shining a light on that kind of work uh, thank you so much for everything oh thank you thank you for yeah. your time for your and for your interest and and for the elevate price that i think is going to change a lot of lives it is it is and and together we'll do it okay well have a great day talk to you thanks soon. you too Bye-bye. Ciao.